Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode here on African Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it was sent to me by one of our admins. Strange things indeed, they do happen in this world. The message reads like this. Hello, my brother, how are you? Can you please post my own story? My story is about this other pastor who is from here in Nairobi who took my own innocence. Please post my story as soon as possible. I will never forget the day my world came crashing down on me. I was in my first term at this other boarding school, excited to start my secondary education in Kenya. But then the unthinkable happened. My father then passed away. I was so devastated when my father passed away. Losing my father was hard enough, but what followed was even harder. My family struggled to pay my school fees and I began to fall behind on my payments. I felt like I was a burden to my mother, who was working tirelessly to make ends meet. I tried to focus on my studies, but the stress and anxiety were quite overwhelming. I felt like I was losing my footing, like I was drowning in a sea of uncertainty. I began to question whether I belonged in that school or not, whether I was good enough. But despite the struggles, I refused to give up. I worked hard, pouring my heart and soul into my studies. I sought help from my teachers who became like my surrogate parents to me. And slowly but surely, I began to find my footing again. All the pain of yesterday were gone. Looking back, I realized that my father's passing had taught me what they call resilience, perseverance, and the importance of never giving up on one's dreams. I might have lost my father, but I then gained strength and determination that I never knew that I had. The next term then arrived and I knew that I had to go back to school no matter what. I packed my bags, but there was no food to put in my trunk, no money to buy supplies and no pads to manage my periods. Yes, there were so many nights when I would actually think of what I was going to use the next day when I would have seen that I am about to go on my periods, but I didn't let that stop me. I wore my uniform with pride. Even though it was worn and faded away, I carried my empty trunk and backpack, hoping that somehow something would come through. When I went to school, determined to learn to escape the hardships at home, it it was for only a few hours. My stomach growled with hunger, but my mind was focused on the lessons. I sat in class trying to ignore the discomfort, the shame and the fear. But all that I wanted was to be in school, to feel normal again, to feel like I belonged here. My teachers noticed my struggles and some of them offered what they called one could offer me a sandwich, a book, a kind word. But it was the kindness of my classmates that touched my heart. They shared uh, their food with me, their notes and their support. In that difficult term, I learned that education was more than just books and grades. It was about resilience, community and the human spirit. And I knew that no matter what challenges lay ahead of me, I would always cherish the power of education so as to transform my life. During this other exit weekend, I met a pastor who would change my life forever. This man, he was kind and compassionate with a warm smile that put me at ease. As we talked, he mentioned about my father's passing and I was taken aback. How did he know? He shared that he had been a friend to my father, more like a spiritual father to my own father, and that he had been following my journey from afar. Then he asked me a simple question. He said, child, oh dear child, do you need anything? Because the Holy Spirit has been telling me that you are in need of something. Something about his kindness and genuine concern unlocked a dam within me. I poured out my heart to him sharing my struggles my fears and my dreams i told him about the difficulties that i was facing in school the emptiness in my trunk and the ache in my heart the pastor listened to me his eyes were filled with compassion he offered words of encouragement to me reminding me that i was not alone that god was with me and that he had a plan to prosper me and not to harm me. In that moment, I felt a weight being lifted off from my shoulders. I realized that I didn't have to carry my burdens all alone. 
that there were people out there, people who cared for me, who understood and wanted to help me. The pastor's kindness support gave me a newfound strength and a renewed hope and a new fresh start. The pastor's next words surprised me even further. He reached out into his pocket and he pulled out an envelope filled with money. He said, take it, child, take it, do not be afraid. He said with a smile, use it to buy whatever that you need for your schooling. At first, I was scared to accept his gift. I didn't want to be a burden to him. I didn't want to take charity, but the pastor's kind eyes and gentle insistence put me at ease he reminded me that god blesses us so that we can be a blessing to others and that he was simply being obedient to god's leading then he offered to pay my school fees for them and he said that he was going to offer then he offered to pay my school fees for the term i was overwhelmed with gratitude and tears kept on falling from my eyes no one had ever showed me such kindness before from that exit weekend onwards, everything had totally changed. I went back to school with a new uniform, all the supplies that I needed, and a heart full of joy. I no longer had to worry about how I would get by, and I could focus on my studies and my relationships with my friends. The pastor's generosity had lifted a weight off my shoulders, and I felt like I could finally breathe again. I realized that God was indeed with me, and that he cared about every detail of my life on the closing day of school i was surprised to see a driver who had been sent by the pastor waiting for me at the boarding school gates he introduced himself and told me that the pastor had instructed him to bring me to his house in nairobi i was taken aback but also grateful for the pastor's kindness as we drove along the way going to nairobi i wondered what lay ahead when we arrived at the pastor's house i was warmly welcomed and shown to my own room the pastor set me down and explained that he had spoken to my mother and he had offered to take me in as his own daughter to lessen the burdens on her i was overwhelmed with emotion feeling a mix of gratitude love and relief but what followed was unexpected. The pastor's family embraced me as one of their own, and I became an integral part of their household. I was given every opportunity to thrive from education to personal development. The pastor's wife, a kind, hearted woman took me under her wing and taught me valuable life skills the pastor's children became more like my siblings and we shared laughter tears and memories in that loving environment i flourished and my life was transformed in many ways i never thought possible the pastor's selfless act of kindness had given me a second chance at life and I was determined to make the most of it. But as time passed, I began to feel uncomfortable in the pastor's presence. He started making advances towards me, which left me feeling confused and vulnerable. I couldn't understand why this man, who had been like a father to me, was behaving this way. I had looked up to him as a spiritual leader and as a guardian, and his actions felt like a betrayal of that trust. I felt like I was now living in a nightmare, unsure of how to escape or to seek help. The pastor's words, once filled with kindness and compassion, now felt laced with manipulation and control. I felt trapped in a web of deceit, unsure of how to break free. My mind kept on racing with questions. How could he do this to me? How could he betray my trust like this? So the thing that happened was that there was this other time when I was somewhere between 15 and 16. At that time, I didn't have any interest at all in boys. But then one day, the pastor called me to his bedroom because they had this because in their bedroom they had an insuit a bathroom and so he called me and when i entered into his bedroom then i heard that he was in the shower he said oh my dear daughter can you please pass me my drying towel because i forgot it so i took it and the moment that i went and handed him this drying towel i then saw the things that i didn't want to see he showed me his manhood even though i kept on looking to the side but he said no do not even be shy for what you are looking at is something that is going to bring you blessings in your life so i didn't understand anyway i just walked away and i returned back to the spare bedroom but that was when it all started there was this other day when he 
he had told me that I should come and collect some cash at his office at the church. When I arrived at the church office, I then found this pastor making love to this other woman who was a wife to this other popular elder, who was a popular elder in church. So I then saw that this man, he was not a man of God, but little did I know that this man, each and every time that he sleeps with a woman, then it means that his church gets bigger. The people that go comes to his church, then they will feel this urge and the need to give him all of their money and he uses women and he kept, he also started to use me. There was this other night when his wife, the pastor's wife, called me into their study room. So I went there when I was in their study room, then the wife then got up and she said that she was coming back. Then the husband came and when the husband came, he was just naked and he locked the door behind him and there was no way that I was going to escape. He did not speak with me, but what he started to do was that he removed some things from this other bookshelf. I don't know what type of creatures they were, but he just placed them on his office desk. Then he started to read his Bible. And my brother, the things that this pastor has done, those things that are quite evil, they say that they are people who have blasphemed against the Holy Spirit. But this man, what he used to do is that after sleeping with me, then he would not leave his semen in my private parts. But rather what he will do is that the wife will be kneeling down, holding the Bible, especially the chapters where it speaks about the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ when he was crucified. That is where the pastor will start to play with his manhood and after that the semen will fall directly on those verses. I don't know why he chose those verses in particular but that is what happened on that night when he abused me for the first time. So the wife returned back. She had a clay pot, a very small clay pot that she used to place on top of her head each and every time when the pastor will be sleeping with me. The pastor then directed me to sleep on the cold floor. It was really cold on that night. Then he came and he mounted himself on top of me. Then he started to do the things that were quite terrible, the things that I do not even want to remember. So when he had seen that there was blood that was coming out of me, then the pastor's wife then started to wipe her husband's manhood using the page of the Bible that she had teared off from the Bible. That were the horrifying things that these two people were doing to me. When it came time for him to ejaculate, that was when it came time for him to ejaculate, that was when he rose up and he went to where his wife was kneeling. The wife had the Bible opened up. Then he started to play with his manhood until his semen yet came out. This abuse kept on happening until I went to varsity. When I was in varsity, filled with hatred, that was when I fell into drug abuse because of the things that this pastor did to me. And I know for a fact that this man, even right now, he is still doing these things. And at his church, I know that he has slept with a lot of women, but he controls them because of his spiritual powers. Dear listeners, right there was a message that was sent to me by our dear sister right there. Strange things do happen in this world. Just imagine um, using the Bible to do those type of rituals. Your 